I grew up, um, I had a great childhood. So I grew up just being um, adventurous, um, day to day, um, always doing something fun outside. Um, I was very involved in sports and um, I had a good core group of friends um, that were awesome and amazing and I was really tight with. Um, uh, I got bullied a lot in middle school. <laughs> I got made fun of a lot from all the guys um, in my group, actually. Um, I was dating this guy, this this middle school relationship, which that doesn't really say much. It was more so like, hug each other at the end of the day, <laughs> leave notes in each other's lockers, that type of relationship. Um, but we dated and then we broke up and then all of a sudden all of, all of my guy friends turned against me and would talk talk crap to me and say that I have a mustache and was was flat chested and um, and that I was manly and all this stuff but uh, being like 13 years old all that stuff like really it it got to me you know like it upset me and um, I felt like all I wanted was like affirmation from from the guys in my life like I've always loved hanging out with guys I've always liked hanging out with guys more than girls and uh, I just felt like I wanted that acceptance, you know, and then um, high school comes around and um, I met a guy and we got into um, a serious relationship and I was young and naive and um, and that is when I started kind of partying, started drinking and uh, smoking weed and all of that kind of just like tumbled it was kind of like a domino effect it just got kept on getting worse and worse and the drugs kept getting harder and harder and um by the time i was like a junior in high school um uh heroin started coming around and um i knew a ton of people that were doing it um my boyfriend at the time was doing it and my two best friends started doing it and I was like devastated. I was devastated that my boyfriend at the time was doing it and I wasn't okay with it. Um, but then uh, I was hanging out with my two two longtime girlfriends and they were just doing it in front of me. And I think we were actually on our way to a high school football game, which <laughs> kind of messed up. So we were on our way to the football game and okay this lighting keeps on getting weird I think I feel like okay yeah there it gets weird and then okay so sorry about the lighting this is I'm doing this on my iPhone so it's not like professional quality it's um, iPhone 6 quality so you gotta deal with it um, but anyways so yeah I started doing doing heroin and it didn't take me long to just become completely sucked into it it was like um, I felt like I was kind of just like looking for like the next best thing I was always kind of um, just a very adventurous like um, free spirit that was always looking for like peace and happiness and um, I just was looking in all the wrong places um, so that kind of twisted my life up. Uh, it only took a couple of years um, for me to end up in treatment. I actually put myself in treatment when I was um, when I was seven or actually, yeah, I was seventeen at the time. Um, and I put myself in treatment. It was hazeled in, and um, it didn't do much for me at all. Um, all I really wanted was to see some like addicts and alcoholics who had completely found, you know, the light and had found the truth and um, I just wanted to see some like real people actually get through addiction and like succeed at it because I had been to AA meetings and I had never really found hope at any of these meetings. It was just like I was continuing to... Um, just to see the death and destruction of what they call a disease. Um, so, um, side note, I really hated how they, they make you say that you're an alcoholic or that you're an addict 
every time that you introduce yourself, it's like, I feel like that's just like declaring over yourself that that's who you are and that's not, that's not okay with me. Like, I'm not an addict. I'm not an alcoholic. That's not who I am. You know, that's not my identity. Um, Anyways, super side note. So yeah, I, all I really wanted to see was people who were on fire for life and who loved life and were free from it all, you know? And literally the day after I got out of treatment, I relapsed and started using again. Um, and then that escalated uh, quickly. I started getting into the rave scene, started going to festivals and doing more like psychedelic drugs and molly and um, acid and stuff like that. Um, and uh, soon enough, um, my family had an intervention um, and it was like a serious, serious intervention. Like my grandparents were there, my aunts and uncles were there. Um, my dad and my, my little sister had driven from Thief River Falls, Minnesota, six hours south to be here for this and um, so it was pretty dramatic and it was 5 p.m. and I was just waking up for the day um, just yeah drugs took a hold of me and it was disgusting I was super skinny and uncomfortable in my own shoes um, just didn't really like had completely lost any any sight of like who I was and like where, like what my purpose was. Um, I just, I just was lost and, um, and it just got dark. Like I got caught stealing. I was lying. I was writing out my mom's checks and, um, like just, I was, I would just hang out with people simply to get drugs from them. And, um, yeah, it was just dark and um, not good. So anyways, um, all my family was there and I, I walked downstairs and um, like all my all these family members were there. And um, they even had their little letters like on the show intervention. They all had their letters and um, had something to say and um, it was wild. So my dad actually... Um, he said that he had a dream that I was going to die and that's why he, that's when he knew that he had to, to do something about it. And then my sister literally said that she had the exact same dream, my oldest sister, Sarah. And so everybody was like crying and, um, and it was just a mess. And so they were like, they kind of gave me an ultimatum, like, Hey, you can either go to teen challenge for a year or you can go live with your dad. And I, of course, decided to go live with my dad and my sisters in, in good old Thief River Falls, Minnesota, boondocks, middle of nowhere, <laughs> Minnesota, literally right on the border of Canada, Minnesota, right, right on the border of Canada and North Dakota. So super cold, super hick, super not my jam at all. Um, <laughs> So I went up there and I got a serving job, which was like my first real job I've ever had. And um, I started to kind of read like Jesus Calling, um, this little like devotional book. And um, I started to get into prayer because um, my, my ex-boyfriend's mom would always be like, you should just try praying like it works and it'll make your life better. And... <laughs> So I kind of, I would connect with God through prayer and through these devotionals because it was kind of like hearing the voice of God every day, like speak to you each day. There was like something new and it would kind of give you like little scriptures and um, really, really uplifting and everything. But I still didn't, I still lacked something. And, um, and uh, so a couple years I think went by in Thief River and um, and then I moved back to Minnesota and started going out to the clubs and going to, to shows and raves and stuff. Um, and, uh, I felt like I kind of like, I felt like I kind of like made that like my identity. I kind of like latched onto that and it was like, first time I had gone to a music festival, I was like, what is this? Like, this is heaven on earth. Like literally 
But then after three days of like doing drugs and going hard, you're like depressed for the next like week. So that was pretty lame. Um, not real heaven because in real heaven there's no depression um, and there's no drugs because you get high off the most high and he's the best ever. Um, <laughs> so I got this job. Uh, oh, this is already going on 11 minutes. Okay, so hang tight here. It gets good, I promise. Um, so I got this serving job and I had a gut feeling, I had a feeling in my spirit, gut feeling, I had a feeling in my spirit that um, this job was going to change my life and uh, it was a serving job at um, Houlihan's in Chanhassen, Minnesota. Um, and there I met this this girl who was also a server and she was um, she was married to the youth pastor at this church called River Valley in in uh, in the metro area, Minneapolis, St. Paul area, there's a bunch of different, uh, campuses. Um, but her husband was the youth pastor. So she invited me to their church. Um, and it was assemblies of God church. Um, the first time I showed up there, I was like in tears. It was like the presence of God was like there. And I had never felt anything like that before. Just this peace you know like they say you know it's a peace that surpasses all understanding it was literally just this peace that i had been searching for you know my entire life and i felt like you know i found it um and it was jesus so i accepted jesus um i truly accepted jesus as my lord and savior um and i got baptized there and then i got baptized in the holy spirit which is a whole nother thing uh, I'd recommend reading the book of Acts if you want to know about the Holy Spirit because I love the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's my friend and um, there's a reason why the Trinity is Father, Son, Holy Spirit and they're all equally God. They're all, they all possess the same mind, the same embodiment of God. Um, I think a lot of Christians these days forget about that and they think that it's Father, Son, Holy Bible, which it's not. The Holy Spirit is like... God around you. It's God like, you know, in your life. It's God like happening. It's God's spirit like alive in the in the flesh, in the physical. Um, it's God's manifest presence that that helps us. You know, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our hope. He's um, he's everything. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I got I got my prayer language, which I didn't start exercising and using until a few a few short months ago. And honestly, my life is so different after after you know using my prayer language, um, speaking in tongues, and because um, it's actually the the Holy Spirit like interceding for you and praying for you, you know, against principalities. And you know, God knows what you need before you even know what you need. So it's it's really great. Um, and, uh, so ever since then, ever since I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, my life was changed. It was like, I couldn't, I couldn't look the other direction because the Holy Spirit would come in and like convict me onto the, to, to a path of righteousness again. It was like, um, I couldn't sway paths because Holy Spirit would always get me back to where I need to go. Um. And I had my aunt and uh, my aunt and uncle uh, are spirit-filled, born-again Christians, and I would go to their Bible study, um, and I felt like God was really, like, pouring into me. Like, honestly, I felt like I was getting, like, revelation after revelation of who God is and, um, like, what I was, you know, created for and everything. Um, and, and my aunt was like, you should check out this school. It's um, in Redding, California. It's called Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. And um, this school, I had looked it up online, and there was a, there's, like, a lot of controversy surrounding the school. Um, a lot of Christians think that Bethel is demonic and that it's New Age just because it's, like, real Christianity. It's people walking in, in the spirit and it's people, you know, you'll see signs, wonders, and miracles, people getting healed of cancer, people's limbs growing out, like, um, people actually being healed physically, spiritually, and emotionally through this movement that, that that's happening in Reading. And, um, and, um, 
So I really kept on feeling like I was hearing Bethel, 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 you know? And so I finally decided to apply and I got deferred to the coast, um, which has been amazing. It's a smaller school in Humboldt County, California, which is the most beautiful place in the world, I swear. Um, literally so beautiful. It's right on the coast and it's right in the Redwood Forest. Um, so you get tons of mountain covered, uh, or I mean tree covered mountains uh, along with the ocean and then the redwoods. It's like amazing. Like I love nature and God totally, you know, brought me here to experience him through that. So um, this is my second year of BSSD. Actually, today was my last day of school. Um, so sad. It's been two years at this school and it has completely changed my life. Like I am completely free. Like I am the new creation in Christ. Like I, my old man is dead um, and I'm now walking in my new nature. Like when Jesus died on the cross, like I died and then I rose again when Jesus was resurrected. Like it's amazing. So, um, I'm, I'm actually just, I'm walking like in freedom. I'm, I'm seriously walking in freedom. Um, I can't explain to you like how much um, of a transformation it's been like um, and it's just been like a lot of like learning how to surrender and learning how to let go and and learning how to let go of religion I didn't even grow up religious but I realized that my my uh, my perception of God was like so twisted and so religious like I, f I, for such a long time, felt like I needed to, like, work my way to God and be a specific way in order to be accepted by God and to be loved by God. Um, like, because every, um, every church that I had ever really been to, I had felt so out of place that, like, I wasn't good enough or I didn't look a certain way, you know, but, but Lifehouse in Humble, the church that I'm going to now is so open and so welcoming and like so full of grace like they meet you in your process and it's it's like come as you are you know and god has just been you know transforming me from the inside out me just accepting you know god is love and that's who he is like he's not in reaction to my life like he just is love like that's that's what he is and he all he sees is like he sees me as a daughter of God. He sees me as holy, blameless and righteous. Like that's who he sees me as and um BSSD has helped me like um to see like my purpose. It's helped me to to form kind of um like based on who I am to see like, okay, what is my purpose in life, you know? And every single thing that's happened in my life has honestly, like God has used everything like for the good. So like I can look at my past um, and I can find like my biggest struggles in life are actually the places that God's given me like authority over and like anointing. Like I'm anointed to set people free from drug and alcohol addiction because God took me, God pulled me out of that. And like, I'm free of that now. Um, and even when I do step out of my, my identity and, and who God has created me to be, it's like, he just like, he is so full of grace and mercy. Like he doesn't withhold his love for me. Like he actually just pours his love out, you know, like times 10 and just continues to love me and like reel me back in like just reminding me that I'm his beloved daughter like he loves me as much as he loves Jesus like Jesus is inside of me now like the Holy Spirit is in me like the Godhead is inside of me like that's what it is it's just learning how to live from the mind of Christ and learning how to renew your mind because I had such such you know negative you know mindsets and I, I believed so many lies and I had such false um ways of thinking um so I mean so many things that Lifehouse has um taught me and I actually started reading my bible I 
I worry about Christians who don't actually ever open up their Bibles. Like I was missing so much in my life until I actually started reading the Bible. And it's like, whoa, like God is so good. Like, is this really the God that I thought I knew my entire life? Like God is love. Like, and the Bible reveals that. Um, so I started speaking in tongues and reading the Bible at the same time and something flipped in my life. It's like this new level of freedom. Um, I kept on writing in my, my journals like a few months ago that I felt like I was having this born again experience. Like some people, you know, they have that when they actually become born again, but I literally felt like I was having like this rebirth, like rebirthing experience, like where I literally like felt like I had been asleep my entire life. Like I literally felt like I was asleep until God opened my eyes and it's like now I can see. Like I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind and now I see. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. Uh, yeah, so life is so good and I'm not gonna ever stop running after Jesus. Like the freedom that I found and the peace that I found, like I understand why, you know, God calls us to share the message, to spread the message. We're not supposed to spread the message to spread fear and to spread hate. Like, hey, if you don't believe in this, you're going to hell and blah, 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 blah. God, Jesus did not die to get everybody to follow him and to, 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 well, he, he actually, he wanted, every, he wanted everybody to be in relationship with him, but he did not die to get people into his club. Like, that's not what it's about. He died so that people would have an encounter with hope, with the God of hope, with the Prince of Peace, and that's who he is. He's the Prince of Peace. He, and it says in the Bible that the Prince of Peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Because Satan is tiny. He's so small. He's so minuscule compared to the God within us. Um, and I feel like if you're watching this, like I feel like there is a lot of Christians who fear the devil and they fear the enemy and it's all about the enemy and fear and blah, blah, blah. But it's not about that. It's like Jesus set you free. Like he's set you free and given you all authority. Like um, we're called to take dominion of the earth. We're, we're called to get back to the Garden of Eden. God actually died to get us back to the garden, which was communion with God between God and man. It was God and man being one, united in one spirit. And that's that's really where God's taken me. I'm so free. I'm living um, breathing, you know, the mind of Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm walking it out and I'm learning. It's a process. I'm learning not to condemn myself because God doesn't condemn me. He doesn't, he doesn't hold a list of the things that I've done wrong. He's actually got a list of all the prayers that I've prayed and he's waiting, you know, in his perfect timing to answer all my prayers and to fill, fulfill the dreams that I have. So yeah, um, that is pretty much my story in a nutshell in, in a 20, 20 minute video. Um, I applaud you for watching this whole thing. If you do, um, I just needed to spill my heart. I felt like it was time. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and I just pray whoever's watching would just receive peace and just a new hunger for Jesus, for the Lord. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, righteousness being connection with God, for they will be filled. You will be filled if you continue to hunger and thirst. Like God found me through desperation. I had to get desperate for God. I had to get to this place where I knew that the world had nothing for me. I knew that I wasn't going to find any peace in this world. I knew I wasn't going to find any hope in this world. Um, so that's why he says, fix your mind on things above. Like, and it's a constant, um, it's, it, it's being in a, in, in a state of rest but being in a state of fixing your mind on Christ and all things, just keeping your mind fixed on Christ because the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Yeah, anyways, God bless you guys.